Most people think that men led and fought in old armies. It's easy to see how these common ideas came to be. History books are full of great people like Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, and Attila the Hun. But fierce women have also been soldiers and leaders of forces in the past. People in different parts of Europe and Asia feared and admired these women military leaders for their ability to start revolts, lead armies, and build countries. Some were ambitious, while others were bloodthirsty and wanted to get back at people who had hurt them and their people. Even though they were different, they were all very good at beating their opponents in battle because they knew a lot about military strategy and tactics. Tamiris sought vengeance for the Persian emperor's deceit. The Masajitae were a nomadic people that lived in Asia Minor, and Tamiris was their queen. Cyrus, the Persian ruler, led the Persian army into combat against the Masajitae when Tamiris rejected his marriage proposal because she saw through his fraudulent attempt to win her hand in marriage. Cyrus was successful in defeating the Masajitae army, which was led by Tamiris's son, Spargapaces, by giving them alcohol and then ambushing them when they were unable to defend themselves. After that, however, Tomyris issued a second challenge to the emperor to fight. In the year 530 BCE, Tomyris personally led her army into war against the Persians, and they were victorious. Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian, made the observation that the reason for Cyrus's death is unknown for certain. Nonetheless, it is conceivable that Tomyris was the one who killed him in battle. Shun Guan led a military force at a young age. At the young age of 13, Shun Guan, who was the daughter of Shun Song, the governor of Xiangyang in China, led a tiny counter-revolutionary group in China during the early 4th century. A government official named Du Zheng, who was aiming to remove Shun Song from power and exterminate his followers, encircled the city of Xiangyang with what appeared to be an army that could not be breached. Because there was a growing shortage of supplies in the city, Shun Guan offered to lead a small army inside enemy lines in order to retrieve urgently need supplies. During the middle of the night, Shun Guan was able to break past the opposing lines with only a small group of troops. She then mounted her horse and traveled to the city of Pingnan, where she persuaded Shun Song's friends to send additional soldiers. Because of the increased men, it was possible to flank Du Zeng's army which resulted in Du Zeng being forced to retreat. Because of her brave action, Shun Guan was able to save not only her father, but also the inhabitants of Xiang Yang. Amage led a mission to slay a prince. After concluding that her husband was unsuitable to hold the position of king, Amage, the queen of the Sarmatians, gained complete control of the government near the end of the 2nd century BCE. During the time that she served as both governess and military leader, the Chersonesians formed an alliance with her in the expectation that she would be able to prevent a Scythian ruler from their neighborhood from oppressing them. Amaj and 120 of her warriors traveled more than 100 miles in a single day in order to storm the prince's palace after her petitions were disregarded by the prince. Amaj and her army immediately overpowered the guards and slew the prince as well as his court. She ensured that his son would continue to live so that he might govern in place of his deceased father on the condition that he would not disturb the calm among his neighbors. Hu Hao was a great general during the Shang Dynasty. Around the year 1200 BCE, King Wu Ding of the Shang Dynasty took a large number of women and Fu Hao was one of them. In contrast to his other wives, Fu Hao held major positions in both the military and the religious community. Inscriptions found on oracle bones manufactured during that time period state that General Fu Hao led successful military expeditions against a multiplicity of the Shang Dynasty's opponents, including the Tu Fang, Yi, Chiang, and Ba tribes. These victories are documented documented in the annals of the Shang Dynasty. According to the inscriptions, Wu Ding also delegated religious and ceremonial tasks to his wife, Fu Hao, demonstrating a high level of confidence in her abilities. In 1976, archaeologists discovered her tomb. She was buried with ceremonial utensils, cash, and 16 servants. Her burial was elaborate. Onomeris led her people in a mass emigration. During the 5th and 6th centuries BCE, Onomaris was a significant role in the spread of the Celtic people throughout Europe. This expansion took place during this time period. A brief narrative of her life was included in a book called Tractatus de Mulieribus Claris in Bello, which was written by an unknown author. 
Other than that, not much is known about her. Onomaris volunteered to lead the Galatians, a Celtic tribe that was eager to escape the famine that was prevalent in Western Europe, according to the ancient Greek record. Onomaris was the one who guided the people of Galatia across the Danube, where they subjugated the locals and eventually settled in the Balkans. Samu Ramat was a warrior queen who inspired a legend. Samu Ramat emerged to power in the 9th century BCE, a time when the region was seeing a number of uprisings and political power plays for the Assyrian imperial throne. He was able to bring about peace in the area. Some historians believe that she used her military power to stabilize the country, despite the fact that the records do not demonstrate how she did this. She participated in military campaigns alongside her husband up until the time of his dying, and then she resumed these military campaigns after she became queen regent. Historians believe that Samu Ramat was the inspiration for the Greek legend of the warrior queen Semiramis, despite the fact that very little is known about the life of Samu Ramat. It was thought that Semiramis was a queen who founded Babylon after amassing her authority via many construction endeavors and military victories before establishing the city. Artemisia was one of the most revered naval commanders of her time. From 500 BCE to 400 BCE, Artemisia was queen regent of the Anatolian area of Caria. Xerxes' worst, the king of Persia, had her as a friend during the Battle of Salamis. In histories, Herodotus wrote about how smart and resourceful she was both in war and off it. None of Xerxes' allies gave him better advice than her, he said. Artemisia stuck to her agreement and led her five ships in the Battle of Salamis, even though Xerxes didn't listen to her advice and fought the Greeks at sea. During the fight, a Greek ship was after her, but she got away by hitting and destroying an allied ship. The Greeks stopped chasing Artemisia's ship after seeing this because they thought it was either Greek or a Persian defector. Xerxes praised Artemisia for the move because he thought she had hit an enemy ship. The Trung sisters were revolutionaries turned national heroes. Both Trung Trak and her sister Trung Ni were raised in Vietnam and received early training in military tactics and strategy. Following the failure of a revolutionary effort led by Trung Trak's husband against their Chinese overlords and the subsequent murder of that individual, the sisters assembled a military force that was primarily comprised of female soldiers. The uprising was initially confined to their town, but it rapidly spread over the surrounding area. They continued to rule as dual queens after their revolutionary army pushed the Chinese out of Vietnam about the year 40 CE, and they had previously ruled the country as single queens. However, just three years later, an expeditionary force from China invaded Vietnam and was victorious over their army. The sisters chose to end their lives lives by drowning themselves in a river rather than give in to their tormentors. Zenobia created a new empire to oppose Rome. During the period of social upheaval known as the Crisis of the 3rd Century, the Palmyrene Queen Zenobia made her imprint on history by rebelling against Roman power. This occurred during the time period. Zenobia served as the queen regent of Palmyra, a kingdom in Syria, following the deaths of both her husband and her first son. During her reign, she witnessed the anarchy that resulted from Rome's imperial power. Zenobia endeavored to build a rival kingdom and dispatched an army to Egypt in order to take control of the country. Soon after, the territories of Asia Minor and the Levant were also brought under Palmyrene control. At some point in time, Aurelian, emperor of Rome, became aware of the growing influence of her empire. After gathering his armies, he launched an offensive across Anatolia with the goal of obliterating any city in the region that had remained faithful to Zenobia. Following two decisive battles, the Palmyrene army was destroyed, and Zenobia's aspirations of becoming an imperial ruler were ultimately unsuccessful. Mavia and her nomadic force swept through the Roman Empire. Around the time of the 4th century, Mavia was the leader of a coalition of Arab tribes that rose up against the Roman Empire. Historians aren't exactly sure what caused the uprising, but they do know that Mavia's army was a terrifying and unconquerable force. She held the position of queen of the Tanukid tribe, which was a fiederatus, also known as a confederate, of the Roman Empire during the reign of her husband. After he had passed away, she took control of the situation and led her troops in battle against the Romans. In their route of destruction, Mavia and her armies passed across the provinces of Palestine and Arabia, wreaking havoc on everything in their wake. 
Her army was unbeatable and the Romans were well aware of this fact. The Emperor Valens decided to negotiate a peaceful end to the uprising rather than engage in combat with the seemingly unbeatable force. Boudicca led a bloody revolt against the Romans. During the year 60 or 61 CE, Queen Boudicca of the Iceni tribe led an insurrection of confederated Britain tribes that fought against the Romans. Rome took direct control over the territory after the death of Boudicca's husband, King Prestagus, who had previously held such control. Iceni property was taken by Roman authorities, who also beat Boudicca's daughters and undressed and publicly flogged Boudicca in public. Boudicca inspired the people of Iceni and other British tribes to rise up against their Roman oppressors and rebel against Roman rule. Boudicca and her army of rebels were ultimately destroyed when they faced off against a Roman legion consisting of 10,000 troops. According to the Roman historian Tacitus, 80,000 Britons were eliminated from the population. Boudicca decided to end her own life rather than give Roman armies the opportunity to capture her. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.